Welcome to our online. Well, we solved one equation or one circuit now for the current. Let's see if we could do a second one. Here's our second circuit. We have a 100 volt source. We have a 10 ohm resistor and a switch that goes from this position to that position. As soon as it switches over, we now separate this portion of the circuit from the source and we'll have a source free RCL circuit. So first, before the switch changes, before time reaches zero, we have a continuous circuit here. Notice that in the case of the inductor, there'll be basically that will be replaced by a short because inductors do not oppose a constant current. And we just have a voltage source and a resistor, therefore we can find the initial current. We can say that the initial current I, when time is equal to less than zero, is equal to voltage divided by resistance, which is 100 volts divided by 10 ohms, which is equal to 10 amps. And you can say then that the initial current that you'll see in the circuit after the switch goes to a different position, you can then say that I when t equals zero will be the same as I when time was less than zero, which is going to be equal to 10 amps. We still have to determine whether or not we have a overdamped, a critically damped, or an underdamped system, so we should find the values for the damping factor and we should find the value for the natural frequency. So the damping factor, by definition, is the resistance divided by two times the inductance. So in this case, the resistance of this part of the circuit is going to be 5 ohms, and the inductance is going to be 1 Henry, so 2 times 1, which is equal to 2.5. Let's find out what the natural frequency is to see if it's underdamped or overdamped. The natural frequency, well, let me put it down a little bit further. The natural frequency is, by definition, 1 over the square root of L times C, which is equal to 1 over the square root of L. L would be, uh, let's see, 1 Henry, and the natural frequency is 1 over 9. So this is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 over 9, which is equal to 1 over 1 over 3, which is equal to 3. So it looks like the natural frequency is bigger than the damping factor, or in this case, the damping factor is smaller than natural frequency. We see that 2.5 is less than 3, and so therefore the conclusion is that it's underdamped. Damped. Which means that the general solution for the current, I as a function of time, is going to be equal to e to the minus alpha t times a1 times the cosine of omega sub d, I should put it like this, d times t plus a2 times the sine of omega sub d times t. All right. So what we need to do here is, well, we already need have alpha, but we still have to find the, what they call the natural damped frequency, and we'll need to find the values for a1 and a2. So first, let's find the value for the natural damped frequency. And I'm looking for some room up here. So we can say that omega sub d is equal to the square root of omega sub naught squared minus, that would be alpha squared. So this is equal to the square root of omega squared, which is 3 squared minus 2.5 squared, which is equal to 9 minus 6.25, 9 minus 6.25, take the, the square root, 1.658, that would be 1.658, and then the value for A1. Notice when, uh, let's see here, when I, when T is equal to 0, is equal to E to the 0, times A1 times the cosine of 0, which is 1, plus the sine of 0, which is 0, and we know that's equal to 10 amps. That's what we determine right here. So that tells us that since e to the 0 is 1, that means that therefore a1 is equal to 10 amps. And now we can plug everything into the equation. We can then say that i as a function of time is equal to e to the minus alpha. Alpha is 2.5 times t times 10, the cosine of omega sub d, which is 1.658, plus a2 times the sine of 1.658 t. So now we have everything about the equation except for one more constant. We still don't know what a2 is equal to. Now that we found the current as a function of time with everything except a2, 
I now need to find A2. And the best way to do that is to find the derivative with respect of the curve with respect to time and find it when time is equal to zero over here and set that result equal to the derivative of this function with respect to time and set it equal to zero. So let's go ahead and do that. So di dt, when time is equal to zero, is equal to minus one over L. Now L is one Henry, that's over here, one Henry, times V initial. But this is when the switch has switched over. So we're looking at this circuit right here, and we're trying to find the V initial across the circuit. So here, this is V initial, and here we have a minus and plus, and notice that the current is flowing in this direction. However, we want the voltage from the top down to the bottom. So notice we have the voltage from there to there is, is plus, and then the voltage from there to there would be a voltage drop, except in this case, it's from negative to positive, so we'll go from here to here, which would be the voltage across here. Now, what's the voltage across there? The initial voltage, let's try to find that, the initial voltage is equal to, well, we have a current of one, where are we? A current of 10 amps flowing to the circuit, and we have a voltage from there to there, so that would be, the voltage would be the current times the resistance. So voltage would be I initial times the resistance. In this case, I initial would be 10 amps, and the resistance would be five ohms, and from there to there, the voltage drop would be 50 volts. So that would be V initial would be 50 volts. Plus, now we have to add to that the resistance times the current at zero, time equals zero. Now, we gotta be careful. The resistance, not a problem. We know that's five ohms. But what about the current? Notice the initial current is flowing like this. So that would be a positive current in this direction but we're finding the voltage drop going from there to there, so we go against the current, so it would be a negative 10 amps. Negative 10. And that completes that, so we have a positive 50 minus 50, which is zero, which means that the di dt, when time equals zero, is actually zero amps per second. So initially, when the switch changes from this position to that position, the current at that moment is not changing. Okay, so we're going to take this result and set it equal to the derivative of this function, the, time, the current with respect to time, when time is equal to zero, and then we should be able to figure out what A2 is equal to. So first, we need to find the di dt. And the di dt is the first, e to the minus 2.5t, times the derivative of what's inside the bracket. So derivative of cosine is a negative sign times the derivative of the angle times 10, so it would be minus 16.58, derivative of cosine is the sine of 1.658t, plus the derivative of sine is the cosine, so plus 1.658t, or a2, times the cosine of 1.658t. So here we have the first times the derivative of the second, plus the second, which is what's inside the brackets, 10 times the cosine of 1.658t, plus a2 times the sine of 1.658t, times the derivative of the first, which is a minus 2.5 times e to the minus 2.5 times t. All right. So there's the derivative of the function. Now we're going to set that equal to zero and set it equal to what we found over here. Not set it equal to zero, but set the time equal to zero. So di, when time is equal to zero, dt is equal to e to the zero, which is one, times the sine of zero, which is zero, plus the cosine of zero, which is one, that gives us 1.658 times a2, and then plus the cosine of zero, which is one, so we get 10 plus a2 times the sine of zero, which is times zero, times negative 2.5 times e to the zero power. All right, so notice that will be equal to zero over here, so that's equal to zero. Simplifying that, we have 1 times this, so we have 1.658 times A2. 
times 10 times a minus 2.5, which is minus 25. This is 0, and that equals 0. So in other words, we have A2, and let me stand to the side here. So we have A2 is equal to 25 divided by 1.658. 25 divided by 1.658, which is equal to, with a calculator, 25 divided by 1.658 equals 15.08. 15.08, and that's the final value we're looking for. So finally, all we have to do is go in here and replace the A2 by 15.08, and now we have the complete equation for the current as a function of time. <clears throat> it's equal to e to the minus 2.5t. Remember, the minus 2.5 was the damping factor times 10 times the cosine of 1.658t, plus 15.08 times the sine of 1.658t, and that is the current in this part of the circuit after time greater than zero, meaning when the switch went from this position to that position. And that is how we find the solution. That's how it's done.